please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. We have important information coming in from the Aadhaar verdict from the Supreme Court where six, Section 57 with regards to corporates demanding or asking for Aadhaar is unconstitutional. Now, those were the words that were used. Uh, is has to be held to be unconstitutional. So that's what we're getting in terms of an update at this point in time. Remember, this is the consensus verdict which is coming in. So to interpret it at the end would be important in terms of all of the statements which come in. But Section 57 was actually the most important important section of the Aadhaar verdict which was being watched very closely and at this point in time uh, which enables corporates to seek Aadhaar or to ask for Aadhaar has now been held unconstitutional. Yes. That's the statement which is no, coming so, in. Uh, a, a few other things, uh, Ekta. So uh, it says that the benefits of Aadhaar uh, outweighs privacy concerns with respect to minimal, uh, to collection of minimal data. So. I mean, actually, we should put these uh, points, the last ones which Ashmit is sending us as well. Benefits of Aadhaar outweighs privacy concerns with respect to collection of minimal data. Aadhaar Act gives dignity to marginalized. Nice. Aadhaar Act serves as a much larger uh, public interest. Parting of minimal data for socio-economic benefits can be can allowed. Be allowed yeah. And there is leg legitimate valid aim behind the Aadhaar Act to check leakages. But I think... The, the last four uh, lines, I think, are extremely important, essentially saying that benefits of Aadhaar outweigh privacy concerns with respect to collection of minimal data. Uh, my colleague Shireen is also joining in uh, on the phone line. Uh, Shireen, I mean, I think we've got the crux of the order now. Well, yes, I think this pretty much, as Justice Ikhri uh, is reading out the majority order, it very clearly tells us uh, that uh, the government has held that there is a legitimate valid claim when it comes to Aadhaar being used to check leakages. Uh, they also go on to say that the UIDI has been able to successfully convince the court that uh, they are only taking minimal data uh, and this data cannot be used to create a biometric profile that can be misused, etc. So there are enough safeguards and checks and balances in place. The court has also said that this uh, uh, the Aadhaar Act serves as a much larger public interest. It gives dignity to the marginalized. So it has held up the constitutional validity of the Aadhaar Act, uh, especially when it comes uh, in the context of being used to provide government services for people to be able to access government services. So that is one clear aspect which will give relief to the government uh, on account of what the Supreme Court has said. Uh, secondly, as uh, we've also reported, the court has cut down on Section 57, where basically all kinds of private operators could access the Aadhaar uh, details using the UIDAI. Uh, that they have basically said that that is not uh, constitutional. They have, of course, said uh, that um, you know the proportionality test has to be weighed in on how it uh, fits in with the right to privacy, because informational privacy is also uh, a right uh, under the right to privacy. Uh, but importantly, this is uh, this is going to be relief for government because uh, it has uh, uh, held up the constitutional validity, especially of the Aadhaar Act, when it comes to uh, the government being able to provide services and people being able to access government services. Section 57, though, we will need to get legal opinion on what that means now because companies have been collecting data, etc. So that's something that we need to uh, we need to get into. Uh, but this is this is a complex uh, order, uh, and remember, it's um, uh, uh, it's likely to be. Uh, there's one two, more point, which is uh, essentially yeah. uh, just uh, Justice Sikri says that authentic uh, authentication uh, data should not be stored beyond six months. I mean, I'm just that's pointing right. out to some changes. The yeah. current rule yeah. says that it can be archived for five years. Five so years, I think that right. five years has been made into six months, so it cannot be stored beyond six months. Go on, Shireen. Go no, on. and there are several other amendments yeah. also that the Supreme Court has called for with respect to the Aadhaar Act. One, of course, is the one that you mentioned, that data cannot be kept beyond five months. The Act currently yeah, says five months. years. Yeah. Uh, exactly. The person will have to be afforded a hearing before his information is to be released. Only an authority above joint secretary can take a call on sharing data. There has to be a consultation between a secretary-level officer and a sitting or a retired judge to decide if data has to be shared in national interest. And the Supreme Court also very categorically stating that the data protection regime, uh, as per the Sri Krishna Committee's report, uh, should be uh, formalized as early as possible. So, A, calling for certain amendments to the Aadhaar Act, and B, saying that the data protection law needs to be put in place uh, as per the recommendations of the Sri Krishna Committee report.
Okay, uh, Shireen, we have some more details coming in from the Supreme Court on exclusion, where they're saying that benefits extended to a large part of the population cannot be ignored mm -hmm. at this point in time, but we're not trivializing the concerns yeah. of exclusion at this point. Yeah, what, so if, you, if yeah. you just, you know, the argument made by the petitioners was that uh, because people don't have access to the Aadhaar card or their biometrics may not match, etc., they were being excluded from getting government services and hence they should be struck down. So what mm -hmm. the court what has basically said is that while we are not triv trivializing the argument of exclusion, however, it goes on to say that the benefits extended to a large part of population cannot be ignored. So by quashing Aadhaar based on the argument of exclusion would amount to throwing the baby out with the bathwater. So they are saying that they accept the government's submission that without Aadhaar benefits shall not be denied, which is something that various UIDAI circulars have uh, uh, gone on to say that you cannot be denied benefits if you don't have an Aadhaar card. So the court basically saying that because of exclusion uh, that, uh, you know, the petitioners have brought up, that argument cannot be used to quash the Aadhaar uh, card itself. Mm. Uh, you know, our, our colleague Kevin uh, has also been following, uh, uh, she didn't stay with us, uh, the entire story since January <coughs> when the hearings began. He's with us here in the studios. Kevin, what sort of stands out to you? Uh, I think two important things that we have to understand. First of all, will this be retrospective? So private companies, now mm -hmm. you're striking down Section 57, all the Aadhaar data that they may have do they have to delete that? Also, if a person has submitted his other data to a company, uh, does he have the right to ask that company to delete that data? Okay. And secondly, when it comes to things like uh, telecom companies, uh, the DOT had asked telecom companies to use Aadhaar as a means of verification. So that's a government body. So does this Section 57 apply to government bodies like the Department of Telecommunications as well? I think these are two things and that we need clarity. You know? I mean, is, is it just private or is it, I mean, quasi-government bodies and government bodies as well? Yeah, right? exactly. So I think all of that gets covered. But in this case, the DOT specifically asked telecom companies mm. to use the Aadhaar to verify mm. uh, before giving a SIM and card. what about linking to bank accounts, etc.? I think that would be a key issue as well. So again, I think there, uh, it depends on whether the R RBI is saying it or whether banks of their own accord are asking for Aadhaar and also uh, I think it's important to note that if somebody is volunteering their Aadhaar information as a means of identity proof uh, or to get authenticated or mm. KYC, does that also get struck down or uh, does the person have the right to choose mm. whether they want to submit their Aadhaar card uh, to get various services or not? I think that's where the distinction lies. Okay, okay. Uh, and uh, it's an extremely important point that Kevin is making. Uh, so there is uh, there's one more uh, sort of uh, piece of information which uh, Ashmit is sending our way, saying we direct, the Supreme Court is saying we direct the government to ensure uh, that illegal immigrants are not uh, issued Aadhaar cards. Uh, okay, so that is uh, fair and square. We, uh, but the rest of the, th I mean, the rest of what uh, is out, we've already reported. Uh, I think the, the key question would be that, you know, if I want to book a train ticket or a plane ticket or, uh, you know, make a new bank account, do I have to submit my Aadhaar details or not? I think that would be the crux of this judgment. Mm. And uh, that's eventually no, what... No, but I think uh, that ties back with what Kevin Section has been saying. Section 57, that, Which yeah. is, if the regulator is saying that this is uh, required, uh, then the corporates are not sort of asking for the data of their own will, uh, of their own uh, sort of... Uh, they're not seeking it for their own, but the regulator is asking that, well, you need to do it. Uh, which is the case with tel DOT and telecom companies. And uh, did RBI banking. tell banks to do this? We don't, I mean, so we'll have to get into the details there. But I think the Supreme Court has just uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, put out the broad outline uh, of how this is uh, going to function. Uh, the last point is important. Yeah. We, uh, I, th I think Shireen mentioned this as well. We accept the government submission that without Aadhaar, benefits shall not be denied. This was a big contention. Shireen, uh, go on. What else do you have? No, absolutely. Just to uh, make that point again, as I pointed out, there have been several circulars that have been issued by the UA UIDAI. Of course, the ground reality has been uh, somewhat different, mm. but the UIDAI has made it clear, which today the court has also upheld, that you cannot exclude someone from getting government benefits merely mm. because they don't have an Aadhaar card or their Aadhaar card may not match or, you know, some mm. such uh, uh, issue with the biometrics, etc. So that has just been reiterated today uh, by the court. Uh, but uh, essentially, this Section 57 being struck down uh, by the Supreme Court is going to uh, require uh, more understanding because, uh, you know, in, in the case where a regulator has asked for uh, for the details, as Kevin was pointing out, will it amount to private companies merely following and complying mm -hmm. with the regulator's directive and order? Or, you know, how is this going to work? Is going to be, this is going to be the contentious issue that will require uh, more legal understanding. But for now, I think uh, it's safe to say that it's, uh, it's uh, a relief for the government, at least, uh, on a large part of uh, the arguments that were being presented in court. 
Okay, I think, uh, uh, Shireen, we'll, uh, we're being told that we'll have uh, Mr. Kapil Sibyl uh, with us on the phone line in just a bit to uh, uh, for his first reactions, and we will stay on the story. This is the big one. Okay, I think uh, senior lawyer Kapil Sibyl is with us on the phone line. Uh, Mr. Sibyl, thank you for taking the time. Uh, your first reaction, sir, to the verdict which has been read out? Well, I, just, I welcome it. I haven't read the verdict, and unless we, you know, see the verdict in its entirety, I can't sort of make any elaborate uh, comments, but... I think it's a, it's a welcome judgment. Uh, I think that what the Supreme Court has said is that uh, it's, it's necessary for those who are marginalized, and to that extent, Aadhaar is valid. Uh, I also welcome the fact that they said if somebody doesn't have Aadhaar, he can't be denied his benefits. That's also very important. The other thing that they've said is that um, biometrics alone are not enough uh, to, to, to determine the identity of a person. I welcome the fact that Section 57 has been struck down. That's exactly what we argued. I welcome that 33.2 has been struck down. But most important of all, I welcome the fact that the Aadhaar data cannot be kept beyond six months. Yeah. I think that that protects privacy, issues of privacy, that protects, um, uh, protects us from a surveillance state, that protects us from the state intruding into our private lives and I, I really I really appreciate uh, that part of the judgment. Mm. Mr. Sibyl, if I may just uh, ask you a quick question on Section 57, because as you pointed out, the court has struck down Section 57 as well as Section 32, and Section 57 it's struck down because it feels that it is something that can be misused. But what happens, sir, because, you know, if a regulator uh, has, has asked telecom companies, uh, whether it's the DOT or in the case of the banks, it's the BI that may have asked banks to comply and get Aadhaar details. What happens in that case? Because then the private entity is acting uh, uh, on behalf of a regulation issued by a regulator. Well, that's the issue. Unless I read the judgment, I can't possibly, uh, you know, respond to those issues. But the fact that the private sector cannot use Aadhaar, mm -hmm. and that fact is unconstitutional, that means it's my fundamental right to say no. Mm. But unless I read the judgment, I can't fully respond to your question. Okay. Uh, also, they have uh, upheld linking of the Aadhaar for the income tax return. So it's upheld Section 139A, sir. That's fine. Which that's means fine. that, yeah, so you, you're, you're okay, you're that's okay so, with yeah, that. That's, that's, that's okay, because in any case, uh, uh, the identity of people filing income tax returns, in any case, is not. PAN card is there, so that's not an issue. Mm. But, but they have very clearly struck down the linkage of Aadhaar with bank accounts, saying that That's this correct. has... Uh, okay, That's so correct. this provision is can unconstitutional? Access, people, can, yeah, people can access bank accounts then, and, uh, you know, monies can be transferred by using your Aadhaar number. So That's very dangerous. And besides, the state can actually find out uh, where your accounts are, what your accounts are, uh, when you open the account, and, and, that's, and that's, an, that's a surveillance state, and, the, and that, that intrusion is not acceptable. Ms., uh, Mr. Sibyl, we're getting information that uh, the court, the orders uh, struck down uh, the linkage of Aadhaar with bank accounts. I mean, that is that's the... exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. That's precisely what I'm saying. That's a very welcome thing, hmm. very welcome verdict for the simple reason that, uh, that the state can find out when you open the account, how, you know, uh, where you open the account, uh, why should the state find that out? That's between me and the mm. banker. Mm. So therefore, mm. therefore, Aadhaar, Aadhaar should not be uh, a, a, a precondition for opening a bank account. Mm. And similarly, even as far as uh, telecom companies are concerned, same Aadhaar thing, same thing, cannot same be thing. used. Yeah. So the same that's principle exactly, applies there as well. That's what I said. That as far as income yeah. tax is concerned, it's necessary. Mm. Uh, and this is exactly what we had argued throughout. That uh, that 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 as far as marginalised people are concerned, under Section Seven. Uh, that's okay, but even there, what we had argued was that if a person doesn't have Aadhaar or the Aadhaar is not working, he should have, he should have the right to, to 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 demonstrate his identity and get the benefit. At the mm. moment, what was happening was if the biometrics was not working, the, even the marginalised could not get benefits. Mm. Uh, Mr. Sibyl, but at the end of the day, this would come down to actually implementing some of this on the ground, right? I mean. Uh, 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 that's another issue. That's another issue altogether. The law has been laid, how it's going to be implemented. Hmm. Still, even, even otherwise, the law can be misused. Yeah, uh, sure. So, but so, so that's something that we will, we will, we will look at as, as we move forward. Uh, but uh, but you, you need to read the judgment, as you said. But uh, yeah. broadly, would you say this is, I mean, Aadhaar stays, but the court is saying that there have to be safeguards. And, and uh, that's how you'd kind of sort of uh, uh, sum it up. 
And it's, uh, it's they watered it down quite a bit. Yeah, go on. on. Section seven, even on section seven, there'll have to be safeguards because your my biometric, uh, bi biometrics of of the marginalised is not less important. Protecting that biometrics is not less important than protecting the the, the, the biometrics of others. Hmm. So I think even 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 that's a welcome sector. That there should be safeguards that poor people's biometrics should not be misused. Hmm. Uh, that's yes. very important. But but. Basic point that I wish to make is that is exactly what the UPA had wanted. Mm. That's what, exactly what the UPA had done. That this Aadhaar must be used for, and in the public distribution system, mm. and they wanted and they extended it to other activities, which is why we were opposing the legislation. Mm. Mm. Uh, sir, in terms of the amendments now that will be required to the Aadhaar Act itself, because the court has basically said that amendments will need to be brought in, and they've also said that the Sri Krishna Committee recommendations, which will later be formalized into a privacy law, should be brought in as the earliest. Uh, so what would be the key amendments required? Well, I mean, as I said, unless I read the judgment, how do I am? I'm sitting outside. I, <laughs> sure. I'm not in court. I can't comment on that. But whatever the amendments are required, naturally, are based on Sri Krishna's report uh, mm -hmm. uh, in respect of data protection and what systems are to be put in place. All that will be uh, incorporated into the Act and the rules and the regulations. Uh, that's another uh, very, very complex issue. And I think there will be a lot of litigation even with that. So I don't think that uh, we have a we have a the open uh, playing field at the moment. Uh, mm. the, there are lots of bunkers on the way, and, and we'll have to uh, deal with them as, as, the, as the amendments are put into place. All right, Mr. Sibyl, we'll, uh, we'll leave it there. Appreciate you joining us with your quick take on uh, what the uh, order is and what the implications are. Always a pleasure to speak with you. Thanks very much, sir. Okay, Shireen, any last thoughts before we wrap up uh, on our coverage? Well, I, it's, a mixed, it's a mixed bag. So uh, mm. I think, uh, you know, um, as I was pointing out even uh, earlier in, this, in the morning, we're pretty much back to 2016 uh, before the government uh, pushed through with the uh, Aadhaar Act. And uh, what has happened now is that uh, the court has basically said that when it comes to the marginalized, when it comes to access of government services, etc., there Aadhaar stands. But when it comes to uh, private entities being able to uh, link your bank accounts, telephone accounts, and mm -hmm. so on and so forth, that has been struck down. So uh, I don't think anybody can claim complete victory. But yes, government will certainly be relieved because at least as far as DBT and other schemes are concerned, uh, to plug leakages etc which has been their argument uh, the, the ghosts getting out of the system at least there is relief on that but the other attempt of trying to link everything under the sun to the Aadhaar that has been struck down uh, today by the court but let's look at the fine print I would suggest you guys uh, 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 you know get back to the market for a bit and then revisit the story yes absolutely Shireen thanks very much for that and giving us that